Hi, my name is Lavinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, in this first of two parts video, I want to show you all the components and how to set up Gaia Project. If you want to learn how to play, you can watch my next video. What I love in Gaia Project is how varied the games are, how unique each faction is and fun to play. There are only six rounds, so you do have a limited amount of time to do everything you need to do. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. It helps a lot. In Gaia Project, you play a faction striving to peacefully settle in the Terra Mystica galaxy by making planets around you habitable. To do that, you need to build mines and upgrade them into better structures. At the same time, you will also form federations and discover new technologies to improve your skills and gain more rewards. After six rounds, you add the points you've gained throughout the game with the end of game rewards. The player with the most points wins the game. Let me start by showing you the components and how to set up the game, starting with your player board. At the beginning of the game, players pick the first player in any way they like, and then each player will pick one of the seven faction boards in clockwise order and receive the set of structures matching that color. Players pick the faction they prefer from the two sides. All these factions have special powers or abilities, which I'll explain later. For now, place your eight mines, four trading stations, the Planetary Institute, the three research labs, and the two academies like this on your faction board. Place the number of power tokens shown on the power cycle area one and two. Here it is two and four. In this game, power constantly cycles through areas one, two, and three. You can charge, you can gain, you can spend, and you can discard power. You charge power when you see this purple arrow symbol. Move the corresponding amount of power tokens from area one to two or two to three. You can only use the power when it is fully charged in area three. When you spend it, it moves back to area one. You always charge the lowest power first. So if let's say you gain four powers, you first move two tokens from area one to area two, as you can only move from area two to three once area one is empty. The only way to move power from area two to area three if you still have tokens in area one, is to discard power as shown here. Then for each token you move to area three, you discard one from your power cycle. You can always spend the power you have in area three, even if you have power in areas one or two. Once all power tokens are in area three, you can't charge more power. The only way you gain more tokens is through various effects during the game, always marked by this purple symbol with a black background, as you add the new power into area one, which is black. Now let's finish setting up the player board. Place your seven tokens, the three Gaia formers, and 25 satellites near your board for easy access. Take the two credit markers, one ore and one knowledge marker and place them on their respective color on your resource track. If your faction has a QIC below its name, add one cube onto your board here. Some factions also take some faction specific components. The Taclon place the Brainstone in the area one of their power cycle. The Gleans take the Gleans Federation token and the Ivids place the six space stations near their player board. Now that players have their individual components, let's finish setting up the other board, starting by building the game board. Assemble seven to 10 sectors, depending on the number of players. Now for the first few games, my recommendation is to follow what the rules say on page four for the assembly of the board. Today, I'll show you a three player game. Otherwise, the 10 space tiles allow for many board configurations. Assemble them as you wish, making sure to align the stars on each edge. At this stage, players can assemble the board together whichever way they prefer. Now, let's take the research board and put it close by, and then take the nine standard tech tiles, the ones that have a green symbol on the back. Shuffle them and place them randomly face up on the nine tech spaces at the bottom of the research board. Then sort out the remaining tech tokens and place three more of the same tech on each space so you have nine stacks of four tiles each. Shuffle the 15 advanced tech tiles and then randomly place one on each of the research areas between level four and five. Then you return the others to the box. 
take all the Federation tokens and set aside the one for the Glean faction, we won't use them. Then randomly pick one of the remaining tokens, place it on level 5 of the terraforming track, sort and stack the remaining Federations and place them near the board. Each player puts one token at the start of each of the six tech tracks. Check this area of your player board to see if you have a research bonus. If it shows a research area, move your marker to level 1 and take the corresponding bonus if it has a white outline and a star. It can be two more ore, or an additional QAC token, or a Gaia former and place it on your player board. Finally, place your seventh token on the 10 of the point tracker. Now we're going to set up the scoring board as it's different for every game. Randomly pick six of the 10 round scoring tiles and place one on each location from one to six. Each of them represents a bonus players can score during that round. Finally, shuffle the six final scoring tiles and randomly place one tile face up on the right of each green ranking track. These are bonuses players will compete to score at the end of the game. Each player places a satellite cube to mark their current score on the scoring board. Keep the QIC, the power, the record, the action tokens and the lost planet nearby for easy access. Now it's time to have a look at the round boosters. There's a total of 10 round boosters in Gaia Project. They provide additional abilities which can be used either at the beginning, the end or during the round. Randomly select three more round boosters than there are players. So today, six round boosters for this three player game. Now it's time to place the first structures on the board. The color of your faction matches the color of your home planet and your home planet is on the drawing on your faction board. Brown are swamps, red are oxide, black are titanium, blue are terra, yellow are desert, white are ice and orange are volcanic planets. For your first few games, I recommend you follow the setup in the rule book on page seven. It tells you uh, factions and where to place your first mines on a two, three and four play game. Otherwise, starting from the first player and in clockwise order, each faction places one mine on any home planet that is matching their color. You take the mine from your faction board, always picking from the leftmost first. Then the last player places a second mine and going counterclockwise, each faction places their second mine so that the first player is the last to place the second mine. Two factions have a different starting condition. The Xenos place their third mine last after all players have placed their second mine. And the Ivids place last even after the Xenos and only place their planetary institute on any red planet. Now that we've set up the game, let's have a look at what makes each faction unique. Depending on your home planet, here, you can see how similar other planets are to your home planet and how much terraforming is required to occupy it. Then here is your starting bonus on the research board. Later in the game, once you build your planetary institute, you will be able to access special powers unique to your faction. These powers make the factions really cool and exciting. Check out pages 20 and 21 of the rules to familiarize yourself with all their intricacies. You're now ready to start playing Gaia Project. Watch my next video to learn how to play and get better. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is right here. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.